Hey, good afternoon everybody. This is Steve. Welcome to the Little Little Wood Shop and our Sunday evening blog. Well, as part of our Sunday evening blog, which happens to be this week, VCarve Pro Cribbage Board Design and Layout. I told you uh, in the midweek shout out, we're going to walk you through the steps necessary to build and design three different boards. Now, we are going to do this in segments. Uh, our first lesson here is going to be a very simple one tool. Yes, you heard me correct. A one tool cribbage board. Okay, well, let's get started. All right, first thing we're going to do is we are, in fact, going to go and we're going to create a brand new job file. So let's create a new file. I know right off the top of my head, I want this to be 14 inches by five and a half. Now the reason for this is simple. Uh, we're talking about going out buying an eight foot stick of material, be it whatever. We're going to purchase a one by six. It can be poplar, pine, maple, oak, whatever you want. It does not matter, but it is going to be a very simple and basic board. Okay. I always start my material off the top. I'm sorry. I always start my z-axis off the top of my material. Forgive me, I need more coffee. Okay, if you're gonna buy stock material, uh, set your thickness to the correct, uh, to, to what it is. It's generally gonna be three quarters. Uh, our datum position, as I told you, I always start dead center. My unit of measurement is inches. Okay, well, we know at 5.5, and I'm also gonna bring up the calculator. Okay, if we divide 5.5 and we divide that by 2, we get 2.75. We know that that is half the height of our project. Now we are also going to go in and we're going to divide that by 2 again. 1.375. Let me get the calculator out of there. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my create vectors, draw a rectangle. All right. I'm going to come in here to my width and I'm going to set it for 1.375 and I'm going to set my lower for the same. I'm going to click apply. All right, let's close this out. Now, because we are using exact stock material, there's no border, there's no nothing. You're going to cut these down to, to size just like we loaded them into set job dimensions you're going to cut your stick at exactly 14 inches and we're using a one by six so we know it's three quarters by five and a half inches in width all right let's take our 1.375 inch box let's move it up let's zoom in let's go to transform objects we're going to align our objects great Close the tab. Now I want to make sure that I am as close to the top here as possible. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to want to add a guideline in here. This node is exactly the halfway point on my material. I'm sorry, it's a quarter of the way on my material. Excuse me. We're going to right click. We're going to pop a guideline and we want it to be horizontal. Alrighty, I am going to zoom in. Oh, my guideline. Great, he's now done. The other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to highlight my box. As long as you're in edit object selection mode, you can do the bulk of your work in VCarve Pro. We're going to highlight it, we're going to double click it, and we're going to pull it down to the bottom as well. I'm going to zoom in. I'll come over to Transform Objects. We're going to align the box. Great. We'll close him out. All right, we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to right click. And we're going to guidelines and we're going to pull up horizontal. We're going to pull him down to the top of this 1.375 inch square. Great. Now what we can do is you can, uh, again while you're in selection mode, highlight your box, click on it again, 
just get it the heck out of the way. All right. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a rectangle. Long rectangle. We want to set it, our height on this, at 750 thousandths. And we're going to do our width at 12 inches. Click apply. Click close. Now, we highlight our box. And what I want to do is when my guideline is running through, I want to get the center node right on the center of that guideline. All right. Now, basically, by doing this, our ends are symmetrical to the edge of our material. Now, let's blow him back up. While in selection mode, holding down your left mountain, uh, left mouse button, I'm sorry. Wow, do I need some caffeine. We're going to light him up. You're going to light him up again. You're going to right click. You're going to copy. You're going to right click. And you're going to paste. Drag him down. Let's align him again. Get the center of our node in this rectangle right on the center of our y-axis line in the center of our guideline. I'd say we look pretty darn good. Great. Now, at this point, we're going to come down to Edit Objects and we're going to Node Edit. Zoom in. You're going to see a little tail form under the bottom of your pointer. Looks like a little tilde key, okay? When that's lit, you can right click and you can delete that span. You can do the same thing basically all over. Again, right click, delete span. We're going to do the same thing over here. Right click, delete span. And one more up here. Again, right click, delete span. Now, what we basically have built is if, you, if this is making any sense to you, you can now see that what we have is our basic board. Now, this is not going to be the board with any sayings on it. There's going to be no font. This is strictly a board with holes. All you need is a deck of, card, uh, deck of cards and four pegs, and you're off and running. Okay. Now, we now need to get our holes in. We go to Create Vectors. We're going to draw a circle. Let's put a little uh, eighth-inch hole here. 0.125, click apply, all right, let's close him up, now let's come down in, let's click on him, and we can see that he's already aligned right on the end of our rectangular box that we just drew. Now, what we're going to do, and please bear with me just a minute. We're going to come in here, we're going to hit our selection mode again, I'm going to light up this bar, I am going to come down to offset, array, and nest, and we're going to copy 38 of these. Now you're going, Steve, we only need 30 holes up in one spot for uh, our actual starting hole, okay? Yes, but please bear with me for one moment. We click copy. All right, all our holes are in. Now I'm going to show you because this is basically going to be the kind of board where you have to play up, you're going to play back, you're going to play up again. It's basically you got to go around the track twice because it's not a continuous board. We're going to start at the top and we're going to count down five. One, two, three, four, five. Hit your sixth one. Hit delete. Same thing. Sixth one, hit delete. By taking out every sixth one, you will end up giving yourself enough space in between uh, so that you can, you can tell where you are score-wise just by giving the board a quick glance. Sixth one, get rid of it. And then what I did was I left uh, enough for a double to be taken out. So you have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Well, by the time you come back, you're going to have your 60. You go up for 90, you come back down for your 120. And your last hole here will basically be your finishing hole. Okay. So what we do now is let's delete this line. We're going to get rid of it completely. We're going to come in here. 
while under selection mode in edit objects, come in here and highlight all these holes. It is literally this simple. <laughs> okay, you're going to right click, you're going to copy, you're going to right click, you're going to paste. Make sure that you, uh, you're hovering over one when you click on it. Great, you see the little, uh, the little nodes? Bring them down. Get him centered on this line as best you can. If you have to and you're off a little, you can come over to Transform Objects, Align, Selected Objects. Great. Because if we were to light it up again, we can see that we are right on our y-axis center line. Okay. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to come in here. We're going to light this up. We're going to delete it. Now, we're going to come in and we're going to light up all of these. We're going to right click. We're going to copy. We're going to right click. We're going to paste. And this time we're going to highlight everything. And we're going to bring it right down. Zoom in. We can see my node is out. Transform objects. Align selected objects. And we center it because we do not want our holes out of alignment. It will look extremely, extremely tacky. Under selection mode, make sure that you're in that. You can light up these two bars. Try not to light up any of your holes. Hit delete. Kapow. Guess what? Your board is built. We can also get rid of our box. All right. We can right click and we can get rid of our delete our guide and we can right click delete our guide. Now let's zoom in. Let's highlight the toolpath function and we're going to go to a drilling toolpath. Now a word of advice here if I may because I have personally done this myself. You're going to basically buy what looks like a quarter inch end mill and it's going to be neck down to an eighth of an inch to accommodate an eighth inch cribbage peg. Okay that's that's rock that's not rocket science there but what is is I would take a set of verniers and measure the eighth inch piece of your mill that's neck down because let's say you've only got five hundred thousandths and you set it for six and a quarter six hundred and twenty five thousandths well now because it tapers up onto the the quarter inch end mill you're gonna now drill a countersink so make sure that you know the actual cutting depth of the end mill that you're using, okay? Well, it is literally this easy, folks. We highlight everything. I know, common rule of thumb, I go 3 8 on my holes, all right? Uh, we can look at the edit. I've already got my eighth inch bit in. Uh, I run it at 12,000, and I run it at a slower plunge rate of 1.0. Now, you have a couple options that are advanced. I personally use peck drilling. I retract above the cutting start depth on all my holes because what happens is with the dust collector going, uh, when you retract it completely up out of the hole, there's generally enough wind going on underneath, it will pull out any, any material that's left down in the hole. It may take an extra pass or two. I don't mind. The one thing I do not do uh, and we'll, uh, we'll get to that in just a second. Uh, or you can actually go in and you can retract above the height of the previous pass and you can set how high you want everything to retract. You've got a little more control there. I just let it retract up and out of the hole. Uh, dwell at the bottom of each drill pass. I personally do not do this. I have a big fear of perhaps the bit sitting in the hole with shavings and dust and creating friction and the next thing you know we have smoke coming off our table. I personally do not use this to each his own though. We hit drill. It's telling you that there are four duplicated vectors uh, in the section that are being ignored. There are a hundred and twenty four remaining. We click OK. Alright let's come down here. Let's click on our black and let's preview all our tool paths. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is your fully completed and finished one bit board. Like I said, if you throw four pegs in a small little Ziploc bag, I used to staple them to a business card, I'd go down to the buck store, I'd get a, a decent deck of playing cards and I'd put these out at my farmer's market for, I don't know, whatever, 
10, 12 bucks. And most of the time I was using reclaimed material. So we had the rustic charm and whatnot with it, okay? Well, this is the first board. We are going to do this, like I said, in segments. Uh, so stay tuned. Part two is going to be coming up. In part two, we're going to show you how to use offsets, different allowances, and what's going to ultimately end up. Uh, we're going to do a continuous track. And within that continuous track, we're going to show you how to pull in some graphics that I've already pre-selected. And we'll go a little bit more in detail on where to go get the graphics, especially for some of the newer subscribers. Uh, so you know where to go. I'm going to take you to places that are safe. And again, we're going to go into better detail with that in just a moment. So please hang on and we'll be right back. Thank you. All right, everybody. Well, we are back. This is cribbage board number two as far as our tutorial and this is a continuous track with graphics. We're going to build the board first. This one's going to be a little bit longer, pitch more in depth because we're going to give you the whole enchilada from build to where to go get the graphics, how to convert them, and so on, okay? So without further ado. All right, we're going to create in vCarve Pro, we are going to create a new file. We're going to go with a width this time of, say, 14.0 inches, and we're going to go with a height of 16. Uh, we'll leave our thickness at 1 inch. As I told you, I start my z-axis always off the top of the material, and my datum position is always dead center in that material. And our unit of measurement in the United States here is inches. We click OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come in, and this time we're going to draw an elliptical. I told you I, I really do enjoy these. And I've already got a size set in mind uh, for my width. I'm going to do a, uh, a 10.5. And for my height, I'm going to do another 14. No particular rhyme to reason. I'm going to click Apply. We're going to close this. And I am going to, in case you didn't see, we're in Transform Objects, Align Selected Objects, and we're going to get him right to the dead center of this. Okie dokie. So, with this now lit up, what I want to do is I'm going to show you how to build a, a four or a three track Ultimately, it's all done in the same steps. However, I, uh, I'm only going to build this as a two track, but I will show you the steps necessary to make a three or four, okay? So let's come in and let's come down to our offset array and nest. I am going to come in here inwards and I'm going to come in 1.25 or an inch and a quarter. I'm going to click my offset. Great. Now we still got a big area inside here. Well, we're going to drop that beautiful graphic, okay? Now, what we're going to do again is we're going to come in here and we're going to draw a circle under create vectors, draw a circle. We're going to pull them in and we're going to, under diameter, we're going to assign him 125 thousandths and we're going to click apply. Alrighty, now with our first hole in and the diameter set and applied, we're going to go in and we're going to make another copy of this, okay? We do that again by Edit Objects, Selection Mode, Light them up, Highlight them again, Right Click, Copy, Right Click, Paste. Now, what I can do is I can come down to the circle here and I know that I want to go a half inch above him. Well, a half inch above him is going to make him 6.25. I'm going to click Apply. Great. Now, the other thing we're going to do, oh, my goodness. I got him in there by accident. Let's delete him out. Uh, we're going to come up here again. I'm going to, again, while in selection mode, right-click, copy, right-click, paste. I am going to come back to my round here. Uh, and I am going to want to make him at 5.25, and I'm going to click Apply. We're going to close him out. I'm going to come down to the hole that we just dropped, and we're going to highlight him again in selection mode. Right-click, copy, right-click, paste. 
I am going to come back to my create vectors under draw a circle. And I'm going to pull another half inch off him, which would put me at 4.75. Click apply. All right. Now, we've got a half inch spacing. We probably don't need to go that far. I could probably get away with 3 eighths. You can play around with this for yourself to get the look that you want. But for the sake of this example, this is what we're going to do for you, all right? Now, the one thing we are going to do is right now, we're going to highlight all four of these. Hold down your shift key, light them right up. Uh, but holding your shift key down, take that offset loop out. Go down to your edit objects and you're looking for group selected objects. Great, now holding down your shift key again, you're gonna re-highlight that loop. We're gonna come down to offset, array, and nest. And we're going to copy vectors along, uh, copy along vectors, I'm sorry. Make sure that you're copying an object, not circles. We're gonna come down here and we're going to look at, we want 100, in fact, 50 copies. All right, we hit our copy button, and we see our copies going round and round. All righty, let's close this out. Let me, uh, let me move this more uh, with the pan view into the center. Now, we're seeing up here where our original starter holes were. And right now we're probably wondering as to why they're not on the exact same loops. Uh, I've asked this question before and the response that I had gotten is that due to the offset and because we want proper hole alignment, CAD is going to make the adjustments in and of itself so that in fact when you, when you go to look at these, we can see that the holes are in fact lined up. And we also see that if we go into Edit Object Selection Mode, when we click on one, we get all four. There's a perfect alignment there. So if we wanted to go out and start removing them uh, every sixth one, it isn't as though you've got to sit here and click on all four. You click on one, you can hit Delete. I told you this would also be applicable to a uh, to a three player. To me, if you're going to run a three player, you may as well run a four. Okay, that's just my opinion. Okay, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pause this just real quick. I'm going to go in. We're going to clean this up, and we are going to, in fact, do this in just a two uh, two player format. Okay, I'll be right back. All right, everybody. We have gone in and we have taken the four player track out. We're going to basically do the exact same thing again. We're going to take our two holes right here, holding down the shift key. I'm going to light up the both of them. I'm going to disconnect my track though. I am going to come down here to edit objects. We're going to group selected objects. We're going to come in. We're going to also hold down the shift key. We're going to write, uh, left click and we're going to light up that offset ring we are going to come down to offset array and nest we're going to copy the objects we need 150 copies align objects to curve and create copies on new layer reverse direction just means the layout will go in the opposite direction we're going to click copy Alrighty, let me close this out. Now, same thing has happened again even with a two player. Our two original starting holes we can now delete. If we don't mind this distance from the edge, again, you can play with this. You can work this and get this more where you would like it, okay? Well, let's come up here and right now what we're going to do is we're going to start the breakdown. We're going to take and we're going to get rid of our loop, our offset loop. I'm going to take these two rounds out. I am, I'm not quite sure where I want to start this yet. So we're going to take and leave these two as our starting holes. I am going to go through, I'm going to take every sixth one out. 
okay? But we will pause this. I will go around and do this because I don't expect you to sit here and watch me for the next few minutes to do this, okay? We'll be right back. All right, now that we've gone around our, our track and we've taken out every sixth hole, what we end up with uh, is we, we stop at 120 here. We are left with four holes. These two are our starters, but we're going to get rid of this one. Let's hit delete. You can leave these two in, and you could put maybe finish right here, and then over here you could put start. So why don't we take real quick, and we'll bring up some text, and we'll go S-T-A-R-T. Uh, Hobo Standard is a, is a cute little font. Uh, but we're going to do our font at about 200 thousandths in height. Let's click apply. Great. While in selection mode again, uh, edit objects in selection mode. Light them up twice. And we're going to drag them up to the top. Let's zoom in on him. And let's rotate him. We're going to work him up in. Now I'm looking at the height. That is still a little bit bigger than I would care for. So I'm going to pop him back out. And let's go back into draw text. Let's change our text height from 200 thousandths to 187. That's roughly 3 sixteenths. That might be a little better. All right, let's rotate him. And again, let's pull him up in. Oof, I don't know. He's still a little, text height's a little too tall. Come back in. We'll hit our text height. And let's take him down to mm, 160 thousandths in height. We'll click apply. I think that will do it now. Great. We'll give him a little spin. Let's roll him up in place. All right, there we go. Now, if we have a start, well, we may as well do a finish. What do you say? So let's go back into text. We're going to keep it at 160 thousandths, and we'll go finish. And let's adjust him. Now, you can fine tweak these, of course, but there you go. You got your start with your four starting holes. You got your finish. You can keep these holes. You can do away with them. That's up to you. All right. Now... We told you the next thing we're going to do is we are going to be dropping a graphic inside this board. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to take and I'm going to for the sake of this uh, tutorial I've already got the vector graphics that are necessary to do this. We're just going to pull them in. We're going to drop and drag them in but then afterwards I'm going to go in and we'll do a small little segment on uh, on Inkscape, where to go, what safe websites to use, so nobody gets in trouble, and we'll do that right after this video. We've done one before with Inkscape, uh, raster to vector imagery, but for some of the new folks that just signed up and subscribed and are following us, I'm not going to make them fish through the library to find it. Okay, it will be quick, I promise. All right, so let's go up to File Operations. We want to import vectors from a file. I am looking for a cribbage tutorial folder and I want to pull in my dream catcher. Now you can do it in either EPS or PDF, all right? Now, we can see that this is an extremely large graphic at the moment. All right, so I I keep you uh keep you in the loop. We go down to transform objects, we're going to align selected objects, and we're going to dead center them. Obviously it's bigger than the whole the whole darn shooting match as far as the cribbage board is concerned. So we're going to resize that. Click anywheres on the graphic, and let's go down to transform objects, set selected object size. Now, the width uh, and make sure your link X and Y box is checked. There are some occasions when we don't, but for this one, because we want to keep the graphic, uh, we want to keep this vector graphic uh, symmetrical. If you hit link X and Y, 
whatever you set either dimension at, it will automatically compensate. All right, we're going to set our, uh, our Dreamcatcher graphic here. We're going to set it to size. It's obviously clearly too big. Link X and Y is, is clicked. We click Apply. That looks a lot better. Now let's close this out. I want to keep him as big as possible. So what we're going to do is I'm going to come down and we'll clean a little bit of this up in just a second. But the other thing we're going to do is we're also going to be doing a custom center on this. I am going to end up taking out uh, the bulk of all this. Hold down your left mouse button while in selection mode, highlight as much of this as you can. All right, we can go in and delete. Just hit the delete key. We'll go back in and we're going to clean up all these little remnants here. All right, now we have our center of our dream catcher open. We're going to come back in. Oh, wrong one. Pardon me. We're going to come back into import vectors from a file. We're going to bring in the tribal wolf. Now again, Mr. Wolf is far too big. We're going to take under transform objects, set selected object size, and I think we want a width on him of maybe 2.0 inches. We're going to apply we're going to grab our little howling wolf. Let's let's roll him right in. My height is too big though. So let's bring my height down to 2 point. Click apply again. Still a little too big. Let's go uh let's go 1.5. Click apply there. I don't think that looks too too bad right now. Kind of eyeball him to center him. There we go. I'm liking that already. All right, let's click close. Now, we told you down at the bottom we had a feather here. And this feather was a little too close to this hole. So, under selection mode, uh, I'm sorry, edit objects, under selection mode, let's come in. Let's light him up. We're going to come over to edit objects, and we're going to click on node editing. What I want to do here is I want to zoom in. And I just want to shorten this a little bit. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right, right click, excuse me, I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to move him up. We're going to click on him again. Uh, I want to straighten this node out just a touch. All right. That's far enough away from the cribbage hole because sometimes I, I have problems when I go to paint this. I don't want it so close that I can end up filling the hole with airbrush paint, okay? So now, we have shown you how to make this a, a two, a three, or a four person board. Even with the offset though, the CAD is going to re-render the track so that everything lines up. We got an, a custom graphic. We're ready to start cutting some tool paths. We've made all the necessary allowances that we need. This, I think, is a really sharp looking board. Now, granted, maybe some of the holes could be closer to the, uh, to the outskirts to give the, uh, the centerpiece a little more room. But let's go in, like I said, and let's just start cutting some tool paths. Uh, my first one's going to be my outer bevel. Oh, my goodness. Let me make sure I get back into edit objects, selection mode. This is our outer bevel. I am going to put an outer bevel on this of 125 thousandths. I am going to click off my advanced toolpath options. It's not necessary. We're only making a bevel with a 90 degree V bit. We're going to click edit. We're going to come into the edit. And we are going to use, we're going to click on select. And we're going to put in a 90 degree half inch V bit. Again, you're going to need to set your parameters to your particular machine. 
We click OK. We're going to call this Outer Bevel. I want this on the outside. What we do is we set our bevel vector for the outer edge. If we set it on, we're going to lose half the cutting depth on the inside. If we put it all the way on the inside, we're going to lose that full 125 thousandths all the way around. Alrighty? We click calculate. There's our first bevel. Let's close him out. All right. Next thing we're going to do is we can start by either the graphic or we can start all of the drilling first. Uh, I generally do the uh, the V-carve engraving. So we're going to do the start and the finish. Uh, we're going to probably go very light with this because they are very small letters. We're going to use a very tight 60 degree quarter inch V-bit we do not need a flat area clearance tool. We're going to go in. Let's zoom in. We're going to click on start. Hold down your shift key and click on finish. This is exactly what we can call it if we want. Call it start and finish. We're real light. We've got a 60 degree V bit. Again, go in, check your parameters. Click Calculate. All right, we're going to close that up. We've got two two pass in now. All right, next thing we're going to do. We can perform the drilling operation if we want, or we can do the vector uh, engraving. So while I've got the 60 degree V bit in, I'm not going to make an unnecessary tool change. So we're going to come in and we're going to light up all of this. Anything that you've missed, hold down your shift key, go back in, and little by little just pick away, get them all lit up. All right, once you have that all done, uh, we, can, we can set a cut depth. I'll start at 35 thousandths on this. I'm using the same 60 degree V bit. I'm gonna come down. We'll call this uh, center engraving. And I will click Calculate. Well, that looks pretty wild. I like that. Let's close this out. Unclick your box. Now, at this point, we still have two more tool changes that, we're, that are going to be necessary. Let's get all our holes drilled. Let's pull up our, uh, our drilling parameters. Same thing again, 8th inch head mill. I use PEC drilling. I'm going to retract above my holes. I want any sawdust or any gunk to come out of the bottom of that hole if possible and have my dust collector suck it up. The easiest way I think to do this, and it's going to be a pain no matter how you do it, hold down your shift key, make sure you are in selection mode, hold down your shift key, unclick the finish, unclick the outer loop, and we hit drill. That's pretty much that there. Alrighty, let's unclick him. And then last but not least is we do have a cutout. Uh, always double check your material. File operations. We set this particular job for one inch. So we'll highlight this. We are going to select an end mill. And we'll use a quarter inch end mill. Check your parameters your feeds and speeds for your particular piece of equipment. We're going to call this cutout. And what we're going to do, again, we put our bevel in on the outside. We do need to show advanced toolpath options because we want 125 thousandths with our bevel we're going to need to allow the offset of 125 thousandths or else we're going to completely cut out that bevel that we just put in and basically you just wasted an entire toolpath 
in a little bit of time, okay? So let's come down here, and our cut depth is going to be 1.02. We're going to go 20 thousandths beyond our overall one inch thickness. We do need to add some tabs, so let's edit those. 10 looks pretty good. We're going to add those. There's plenty of meat in there to hold this. Let's close it up. Everything looks good. Outside, we've got an offset allowance of 125 thousandths. We keep our bevel. Our cut depth is 20 thousandths over. We'll call this cutout. And we'll click calculate. Yes, this is just a little tool warning in, in VCarve Pro. It's going to tell you that you're going beyond the material thickness. You're going to cut into your spoiler board. We know that. We click OK. Now, let's close this up. And let's look at all of the toolpath functions. All right, start and finish. We'll assign that in a bright red so you can see that. We're going to also take and we're going to do the center engraving uh, maybe in a nice vibrant green. You know, play around with your colors, maybe see what you like. Ah, uh, that's a little loud. Not bad. But yeah, you can you can definitely play with your colors to see what you uh, what you want to get. Because this could potentially be a job that you can send out to your, your client. Alright, we'll we'll leave it with the green. <laughs> and then our holes, if we want, uh, we could assign these black. That's pretty much it. That is a full tutorial on a custom built uh, two player CNC continuous loop uh, cribbage board with a custom drop graphic in the middle. Alrighty? Alright. Well, stay tuned. We're going to take and we're going to basically show you the next step. Uh, part three is going to be just a quick overview of where to go where to get some images, where I get my images, and uh, how to convert them into usable vector files. All right, everybody? All right, everybody. Well, we're back. Real quick, I'm going to try to... I know the video is getting lengthy here, so we're going to try to keep this down. But I'm going to take you to some safe places where you can go, and you can get free, unlimited... No membership, no dues, no licensing fees as far as your clip art is concerned. We're going to start with uh, a website right now. All right. I've been using them for the last few years. OpenClipArt.org. Uh, we do have links to this, I believe, in the blog. If we come down and we look, uh, we have an individual here. Uh, the clip art at Open Clip Art is public domain, meaning you can use it for just about anything. For books, catalogs, websites, homework, commercial, non-commercial, so on and etc. What we'll do is we'll scroll down to the bottom and we're going to look at the license. Unlimited commercial use. We try to make it clear that may you may use all clip art from Open Clip Art even for unlimited commercial use. We believe that giving away our images is a great way to share with the world our talents, and that will come back around in a better form. Okay, so this is a, a really nice, really nice website. A uh, lot of lot of good graphics in here, and as a matter of fact, we ended up getting uh, we ended up getting the dream catcher that we just did in the prior video uh, right there. All right. The nice thing is, is you get a multitude of formats. You can already download a PDF if you'd like, or you can get a transparent PNG raster image. Uh, basically, I would recommend getting the, the PDFs if you can, because they are already a vectorized file. Okay? The next website that we have, and I use them pretty exclusively for all the video, uh, I'm sorry, for all the imagery in the blog itself. Here is another one. Free images and videos you can use. All images and videos on Pixabay are released free of copyrights under a Creative Commons. 
You may download, modify, distribute, use them royalty free for anything you like, even in commercial applications. Attribution is not required, but it is nice to mention the artist whose items you may use. Uh, you know, we could type in the word uh, CNC and we get some really nice high graphic images. So maybe some of you want to write some blogs or maybe you need some graphics for your own machine shop or wood engraving shop. This is really a nice place to go. Uh, you'll probably recognize some of the images in here. We have used them in our blog ourselves, And it too is all free. Something to keep in mind. All right. Again, that is pixabay.com. All right. The other one I just stumbled across the other day. Uh, well, the other day, as in this past week. Public domain clip art. It's a huge collection of public domain clip art. It is free and no registration is required. We hope you enjoy uh, the clip art useful for your documents and projects. Enjoy. You can go in, you can grab, uh, I don't know, we'll look at, uh, we'll look at domestic, domestic dogs here. All right, well, it took a, took a second there to load, so. All right, we scroll down. And what we see is I'm looking for line art in particular. We're going to do a video, I think, another day on converting uh, colored graphics into black and white and then into more rendable uh, vector images. But for today, we'll, uh, we'll look at Mr. Bulldog here. All right. Let's close him out. We've got our image right here. Okay, so let's right click him. Let's save image as. I'm going to put him right in my library, uh, in the cribbage library with this particular project, and we'll just save him. Alrighty. Alright. Last but not least, this is Flickr. Uh, Flickr offers a lot of upcoming uh, photographers and people who want to be found. However, we need to be careful in this website because there are certain exclusions, there are certain copyrights, and it's it's a little mixed up sometimes, but for the sake of the tutorial, let's type in, uh, we'll type in cribbage, and we'll pull them up. Okay. <laughs> These are all the images. Now, we may think that we are allowed to go in and use any one of these that we want, and that's not the case. Whatever your search criteria is, come down here under the bar that says any license and click on commercial use and mods allowed. Anything you can modify, cut, crop, edit, all right, markup maybe. We're going to click on that. Now what we have and what we see here are images that are a little bit safer to use however let me drag one in this is a picture of a I think it's a fake uh, ivory tusk or something it's probably composite or plastic that somebody made a, a quaint board out of we need to scroll down and we see some rights reserved why don't we just click on those and find out exactly what the requirements are Copy and redistribute the material in any medium or format. Remix, transform, and build upon the material for any purpose, even commercially. Under the following terms, you must give appropriate credit, provide a link to the license, uh, and indicate any changes that were made. Uh, I just try to take these pictures. I keep them raw. I use them as is. Uh, you may do so in any reasonable manner, but not in any way that suggests the licensor endorses you or your use. I don't know any of these these fine ladies and gentlemen. So, and if you remix, transform, or build upon the material, you must distribute your contributions under the same license as the original, and you may not apply legal terms. You can't take somebody else's image and slap a copyright on it. That to me is just a little silly. All right. 
But read your licensing terms. This is a nice site. You can get some nice pictures and some good images and just give, give recognition back to the original photographer because like all of us, he or she is just looking to be found as well. Okay, now one of the last things that we're going to mention here is uh, this is an incredible piece of software. We're going to pull it in real quick. <laughs> Excuse me. In the blog itself, we have a direct download link for this page right here. This is open source. There is no cost. There is no money for this. There may be a, uh, I think there might be a contribute or a donation if, if you feel you could uh, donate a couple bucks. But these are done by developers. Now, Inkscape is, a, uh, is an illustration software much like Coral Draw or uh, Adobe Illustrator. No, it's not like Photoshop. That's photo editing. Uh, but what this does is this allows you to take raster images and in a very simple step, you can convert that into a vectorized image. And what we'll do right now is we will show you real quick just how wonderful this software works, okay? I'm going to pull up my copy of, uh, this is my copy of Inkscape right here. It's live and active on my computer. We'll go in and let's open up that bulldog we just downloaded. All right. We want to open up Mr. Bulldog. We're going to click on open. And up he comes. Now, we can see that he is, holy smokes, yeah, he uh, he's definitely a raster image. But we're going to see what we can do to clean him up. Pull him outside of the box. Left click, just hold your, your left mouse button down and drag him out. Click on path. Trace bitmap. And what it does is it brings another box up. Brightness cutoff. This works awesome for black and white imagery. Edge detection is another possibility. And color optimization when you're working with color photos. I prefer to do everything in black and white if possible. I would personally rather render a colored image into black and white. It makes software like this work a little bit better and it reads and depicts the image a little better as well. We're going to click on OK. We can close this box out and we're now going to drag the image of Mr. Bulldog right over. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover the other Bulldog right over the top of him. And what we're going to do is we're going to come in here and we're going to zoom in now you can already see the lines are getting choppy. You see how choppy they're getting? Well, if we try to run this image, you're going to cut what looks like staircases in your tool pass. Now you see the image below that we just rendered. Nice, clean, crisp lines. Very easy graphic to follow inside of your VCarve Pro software. Take Mr. Bulldog. Highlight the one you don't need. Hit delete. Highlight the one we want to keep. Go up to file, save him as, I don't even change the names on these. I keep them as I originally download them. Now we have a bunch of file options. The two that I'm going to recommend the most is obviously PDF, or portable document format. We'll save that there. And the other thing that I will do is I will also save as. And you can come down and find another one called EPS, or Encapsulated Postscript. These are both good vector image files. We click OK. All right. We can now take, and we have saved our, our beautiful bulldog here. So we can close without saving. All right. We're going to open up a fresh copy of Vetric. And real quick, we're going to show you what just happened by converting that raster image, all right? Uh, the job size doesn't matter for the sake of the example. <laughs> all right, let's go up to File Operations, Import Vectors from a File. Here's our Bulldog. Let's pull him in as a PDF. Let's open him up. 
Transform objects. We're going to center them in the workpiece. Transform objects again. Let's select object size and we'll go width. We'll go 12 point. Alrighty. Now, link X and Y is always checked when we go to resize something like this. That way there we have a symmetrical image. Let's close this image out. Let's come up to tool pass. Uh, we'll just throw in a, a V-bit real quick and yeah, we'll mill him out at 35 thousandths. Let's mill him. Okie doke. Let's put him in black just so we have some color to him. And we'll preview all tool pass. There you go. You can take an image, save it into your directory, a folder, my documents, your desktop. You can pull it into Inkscape. You can take a raster image that looks like a saw blade, you can convert it into a clean, fresh, crisp line in a vector converted image. Save it save it to wherever you want as either a portable document format or a encapsulated postscript. And the other thing that I also do for all of you is we go to our file and we would export him as a DXF, which is a digital exchange format file. And as I told you, this is kind of a universal file set. So my CNC guys out there with a laser who may want to burn him, well, they can pull the DXF file in because of how universal it is. And then they can burn this bulldog. And maybe they're going to wrap a, uh, you know, they're going to take and they're going to wrap uh, a USMC, you know, project around it. So there is a lot of possibility with converting your vector images and using them, okay? Well, I hope this helped. Uh, we have one last piece to this. I know we're climbing up in time, uh, but stay tuned. We've got one more last segment, and that will finish up our video. All right, everybody. Hang on. We'll be right back. All right, everybody, this is, I promise, the last segment of the video. We are creeping up on an hour, but I hope there's some pretty good content in here and that you've all gotten a little something out of it. Okay, last and least, we're just going to create a, uh, we'll create a new random file, 12 by 12, an inch thick. We start off the top of our material, datum is in the center, unit of measurement is inches. Okay, we're going to go up to our import vectors from a file. Now all of you have a vector file that was included in your vCarve Pro and it gives you basically close to a hundred items between panels, uh, shields, plaques, things like that. What we're gonna do is I have found a couple in here that I've used. Uh, we're gonna start with the first one right here. It's a big heart. For the sake of the example uh, I'm going to reset the object size down to 11 inches. We'll click apply. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to basically just show you how you can make a cribbage board with odd shapes. I'm not going to go into inserting any graphics. You can easily get that from the, uh, the prior tutorial and apply it to anything going forward. Okay. We are going to come down to an offset. And I'm going to offset this by 750 thousandths. Basically what you have is you have a heart within a heart. Let's close this out. Let's come down here. Let's go over to our create vectors and we are going to draw a little circle. Same thing again. We want to make it 125 thousandths. We're going to apply. Let's close him out. All right. He is looking to be pretty good right there. Now what we are going to do is we're going to right click and copy. Right click. We're going to paste him. And then we're going to come back down to... Draw a circle. He is 
three, two. Well, we're gonna this time we're gonna subtract five hundred thousandths. So we're gonna take him down to two point three. And then I'm gonna click apply. Alright, let's close him out. Now what we're gonna do again, holding down the shift key, let's light them both up. Let's come over to Edit Objects. We're going to Group Selected Objects. Come over here. Hold down the Shift key. Highlight your inner offset. Let's go down to Offset, Array, and Nest. We're going to copy object along vectors. We're copying the object. We know this is going to be a continuous cribbage board. So let's hit Copy. Alrighty. Again, I would possibly think about cleaning some of this up only because I don't like how tight they are around one another. Let's spin him out. And we would do basically the exact same thing again. I'm going to get rid of my two starting eighth inch holes. We'll delete those. I will also get rid of my line and I know right off the top I am going to be able to get rid of those, to get rid of those, get rid of them and then what I will do to try to keep this as simple as possible again we go every six oh goodness and you get the picture we're just doing the exact same thing that we did once before. Oh, took out number five and not number six. Just go up to uh, File Operations, click Undo. And we would go all the way around the board like that. All right, now we've gone around and we've taken out every sixth hole. We notice though there are some indiscrepancies here that I would have to rework for my own personal liking. Uh, we can see the holes up here yeah everything's lining up as should right here this to me I don't like the looks of this so how we would handle this is we would come down to uh, edit objects we could ungroup so now when we go to click on it we only have the one so we're gonna take the one and we're gonna move it just a, just a sniffle alright so now what we can do is we can come back we can highlight him Hold down your shift key, light him up, and then we can regroup. All right. And because of this board and this style and layout, I would probably take these two. I would uh, I would delete them, and I would just take my four starter holes right here. And I think that I would just do this personally. And I'd probably even get them squared up a little bit better. You can go in and you can most certainly highlight the four of them. Come in here, ungroup. We could take uh, your two starting ones. You can move them. So you start here second player starts here you go around the board there would be a little there will be a little bit of reworking in some of these really crazy designs down here here's another one these two line up perfectly but this looks kind of obtrusive right here it doesn't even look right I would personally probably rework this area sneak things up a little move things around but do it by grouping and ungrouping uh, your items right here in edit objects ungroup and then from there you can go around and you can move them separately or you can go in and you can regroup uh, you can highlight say just four of them and then you can go back in and you could group those if you wanted and move just them alright that's entirely up to you the other thing we'll do is uh, We'll give one more example. 
Same thing again. We're going to stay with the dimensions that we have just for the sake of this example. And we're going to pull in a, another different panel. And this is number 82 in my 2D clip art folder that came with my VCarve Pro software. This is a cloud. This is another one that I think uh, I'd personally go a little bit wider than 12. Yeah, I'd do it 14 by 14. Or maybe I'd go with a width of 16 point. Okay. I'm going to click on my cloud. I'm going to come over to transform. I'm going to resize my objects. I'm going to take them out to a width of 15.0. My link X and Y is checked. It automatically reconfigures so that we have correct symmetry. And then from here, I would come down to the offset. Same thing again. Uh, I think this time, though, I'll come in an inch. And we're going to offset him. Great. Let's close him out. Again, let's start. Oh, let's start right uh, with another eighth inch hole. We're going to start him right there. We're going to close him out. I'm going to right click, copy, right click, paste. We're going to come back to create vectors, draw another circle. I'll put him below. I'm going to put him a half inch. So uh, instead of negative uh, 2.7692, excuse me, I don't have my glasses on. Uh, less 500 thousandths will be 2.2. Let's apply. Oh my goodness, I went the wrong direction. All right, let's redo that. I need to add. Uh, so we'll go. 2.7692 plus 0.5. Okay, and we come up with 3.2692. Yeah, that's a little bit better. Apply. Great. All right, then what we do, we know we come in here, we hold our shift key down, we highlight both of our eighth inch holes, we come over to group selected objects. Great. Let's come down, let's light up our inner border uh, for our offset. Let's go down to copy along uh, vectors, copy object, number of copies, run them. Let's close this. Let's take a bigger look. We can delete these out. We can delete our line out. Same thing is going to apply again. I would take and delete these. I'll keep these two as my starters. We'll dump him. And then we take, again, we'll take every sixth. And we may want to go in. And here, I don't like the way that looks. These are my starter holes. What I would personally do here, I would ungroup. Actually, we'll come in and, yes, we'll ungroup these two. Now we go to light him up. We can drag just him over. That is a little bit better. It takes a little practice, especially when you're doing oddball shapes like clouds or splatters or anything. Uh, I know people that go out and they do like dog bones. Uh, no matter who your client, no matter how simple, no matter how complicated the job, there is definitely a cribbage board for everybody and I've seen these that have been fabricated so beautifully I wouldn't even play on them I'd, I'd put them in a glass corner cabinet or a, a curio case or something like that you know I, I hope as always I hope this video uh, this tutorial helped all of you uh, I know there was a lot here this was a big undertaking uh, we had some rain days this week and I'm seriously between a couple clients right now so I thought I would give all of you the best that I could give of, of me and I hope this was helpful
Again, ladies and gentlemen, my followers, my subscribers, thank all of you to know. I thank all of you to know when. I'm, uh, I'm going to go snap out of it, get a cup of coffee now. And uh, I hope all of you have had a great weekend with you and yours, and uh, you had the weather for it, because I know we don't. All right? Take care, everybody. We'll see you Wednesday for the midweek shout-out. All righty. Bye-bye.